IBB Builders Merchants proudly supports volleyball. System here, potentially in the game as he does from the inside. Neil Sink. That's a good swing. International. The experience. Block is watching through the net. It has been a long summer of volleyball VNL World Champs all over Europe, but I'm finally back in my hometown, Miami, and I get to show you guys what it's like to play volleyball around here. So we are here on Miami Beach. It might rain, so let's be quick and see if we can find some people playing volleyball. I didn't have to look for long. Beach volleyball is super popular in Miami and its home is, of course, on South Beach. Every court has two on two going and it's busy almost all the time. Let's meet some of those happy players. We have about, give or take about 150 people out here that are on the constant every day coming, some transient players and um, we get together. We have a really good level here actually. Uh, like every single day there's like pro players coming, AVP, amateurs, beginners. It's like an overall like level, but it's a really good level. There's definitely some open play, open players here. Very good. In fact, we had the king of the king of the courts uh -huh. here yesterday. He was amazing, uh, but it's definitely high level. Hey, hey uh, Gil, what's the level of competition here? Like, what's the level you think? Okay. Open? Yeah. So, He's one of the best. He's just being no, humble. Quite the He's being humble. I'm quite the opposite. I'm just sexy. <laughs> <laughs> you play here on the beach. You also coach beach volleyball in the mainland where we live. Uh, what's the level like here in Miami? I think that down here in Miami, especially specifically South Beach, is the highest level of volleyball they can find in Miami for Lotto and maybe even No, no, Miami, Miami Beach. This is Miami the place beach to be. Is better. Um, and how often do you play? I play seven days a week. Oh my gosh! And do you love volleyball as much as I do? I think I think I love it more. I think you do too, <laughs> at least beach volleyball for sure. For sure. I've been playing here since I didn't even know how to play and people yeah. were like, including me, like there was people for me to play with. It's yeah. not like, you know, it's so high that you can't even come in as a beginner. There's, you know, it's a mix. And there's something for everyone. Yeah, but there's also like people that, it's not that I wouldn't play with them, but it's just kind of like, no one's going to have fun because they're so much better than me. <laughs> there are some so people anyway. out here that are so much better than all of us, but we yeah. let them We let them play with Yeah, themselves. they kind of like do their thing between themselves. And you know, they're inclusive too. Like they'll be like, come play. I'm like, yeah, maybe in a year. I've seen you out here playing. You're pretty awesome. Thank uh, you. How often do you have to train to get to this level? Uh, I train about three times a week, but I play five, six times a week. So this is sort of my home. And what's the what's your favorite part about playing here in Miami? The community for sure. I grew up here and you know I've traveled all over the world, played a lot of volleyball in a lot of different places and there's no place like here. Um, so I, I love it. People come here, they have kids, they've got their dogs, you know, we just play, it's we hang out after, go have pizza. Yeah, it's a good sports system, good network. The community in South Beach is like unlike anything I've ever had in, in anywhere in the world. It's awesome. We have people from all over the world that come here to play. That they they love playing with us because we're welcome. So everybody that's out there that wants to play volleyball, tell me, come here, and just hang out with us. I can attest to that because I just show up and everyone's like, "Hey, have a beer." <laughs> it is the best community. Um, I love these people, and once you come here a lot, then it's like a family. Um, and there's always like random people passing through from other places as well that just kind of jump in and play with us. Yeah, I'm one of those randoms. <laughs> no, you're not. You live here. But it's a good vibe. It's, it's always a good vibe. It's always really good energy every time I come out here. And why do you think Miami is the best place in the world to play beach volleyball? Because um, you can play volleyball every single day of the year. Every single day. Good There's point. no winter. There's no winter. There is no winter. <laughs> it's winter right now and we're out here. Hey, hey. Ocean, so 700 Ocean Drive, South Beach, 33139. How's that for you? See you there. Ah. It is time for the news corner, and you know what that means. If you've seen the show before, I'm just going to give you a little teeny weeny update on the world of volleyball as it relates to you and to me. Basically, whatever I think is important that's happening right now. So first of all, international competition is over. Boo! 
It was such a fun summer with the VNL all over the world. I got to be there in Bulgaria, in Poland, in Italy, in Turkey. And uh, then the men's and women's world champs in Slovenia, in Poland, in the Netherlands. That was super cool to be a part of. And you can catch up on all the results and watch some of the matches at volleyballworld.tv. You might even catch some of my voice. Now, the indoor domestic leagues have started, so I'm doing a little bit of commentating for them as well, for the Italian league, both men's and women's. Already, two teams have leapt ahead in the rankings. Unsurprisingly, Conigliano on the women's side is undefeated, sitting right at the top of the table with 32 points, 11 wins, and zero losses. Next closest is Milano with 21 points. They have eight wins and one loss. On the men's side, Perugia is having a fantastic start to the league. They got 30 points. They're on top of the table, also undefeated, 10 wins, no losses. The next closest are Modena with only 17 points, five wins and five losses. Champions League is underway and one of the most exciting matchups so far was Trentino Italy versus Zaxa. Kejir and Kojla, I have still no idea how to pronounce that, but they were two of the teams in the finals for the last two years running. The Polish team won both times, but now they meet in the group stage for the first time since 2018 and Trentino won 3-1, which might be a sign of a changing of the times. Three players from each team were also part of the Italy-Poland showdown in the World Champs final this summer, where Italy beat Poland 3-1. And so Italy are now European champs, world champs on the international scene. Could they also reclaim the Champions League title this year? Time will tell. Pool play hasn't yet started on the women's side at the time of this recording, but... Be sure to tune in to Pool C, where our very own Meg Vigors and her new team Potsdam in Germany are going to be taking on Novara from Italy, Vakif Bank from Turkey and Biograd of Serbia. Whew, tough matches, but you can find the times and dates for those matches. They're happening between now and February. You can find all the info on championsleague.cev.eu. In addition, the beach volleyball scene is wrapping up, and if you have been following along, you might recognize the names of one of the teams, the Bello Brothers, who were actually guests on this show just a few months ago. They are setting records on the international scene. Javier and Joaquin Bello, as well as another strong England team of Isa Betrain and Freddy Bialkos, again, Hope I got the pronunciation right. They became the first English teams to enter the qualifiers of an Elite 16 tournament, which is the highest level of the FIVB international circuit at a recent event in Cape Town in South Africa. The Bello brothers, as you know, are Commonwealth Games bronze medalists. They were also playing together for the first time since they took bronze in Cortegasa in August. So both teams won both qualifying matches, but Isa and Freddy were the only team to take a win in the main draw. Both teams ended up finishing joint 13th in the group stage. Still a huge accomplishment to get to this level, to come face to face with Olympians, multiple time Olympians in the competition and prove that England beach volleyball is on the way up. I can't wait to see what the future holds for beach volleyball in England. The weather may not be exactly like South Beach here in Miami, but the love for the game is certainly heating up. Here's a fun fact for you from the inside world of volleyball. Did you know that every club that plays in the Champions League has to have three different sets of uniforms? While most of the teams differ their uniform with colors, IVB Polonia turns out to be much more creative than that. I think it was around seven or eight years ago when we've agreed that it would be nice to use uh, sport diplomacy and the volleyball club as a vehicle to promote Anglo-Polish uh, relationship, be it historical, be it political. So that's why we came up with an idea to put uh, designs on the shares that would commemorate some kind of uh, links between two countries. By now, IBB has produced seven special editions of t-shirts, each of them commemorating one common historical moment of Poland and GB. My favorite of all of them is the commemoration of the Battle of Britain. It's a super shirt, very, very cool. I really like it. It has British planes on it in a really nice kind of checkerboard pattern. Um, it's got um, Spitfires and it's got Hurricanes and it's also got the Polish Air Force logo on it. 
Another historical character depicted on t-shirts is the Polish secret service called Silent Unseen. They were created in England during the Second World War, after which they were parachuted to Poland. The 100-year anniversary of the Polish and British Air Forces also found its place on an IBB shirt design. The other shirt that I really liked is the one that uh, commemorates Joseph Konrad Kozniowski, uh, born in Poland, uh, but became a world-renowned British author. And uh, his images and, and some of his writing appears on the shirts. And just recently we had Enigma code breakers commemorated on our shirts. So three Polish mathematicians and one British mathematician were featured on our shirts. We've got Alan Turing, Henryk Zygalski, and you can see there a little bit about them and something to do with the code. I wish I knew exactly what the code meant over here, but it was all part of the Enigma project. Very historic. Those t-shirts are not only collectible merchandise, but were also used by the team on multiple occasions. Shirts that we make are fully used by the players, so they would play National League games, Champions League games, National Cup games. I know that whenever these shirts are given out, I, I look at the people's faces, the players' faces, and uh, you can see that you know that their eyes are big and their mouths are open. Listen to the quote, Heart of Darkness tells a story within a story. That's what we're all about, stories within stories. Each IBB Polonia fan can get a personalized shirt with their name on it. I think currently there must be around 500 IBB Polonia shirts circulating somewhere around the world among fans and also some uh, high-flying, uh, um, be it political or international personas. So prime ministers from both UK and Poland, a uh, couple of uh, presidents. So even nice uh, gift was recently received by Mr. Turing. Uh, who is the uh, family of the original uh, Alan Turin, who was participating in the Enigma code uh, breaking. For the next year, the club will release a new t-shirt design with the names of all Polonia players from its history. All right, we've come to one of my favorite parts of the show, the interview section, and we have a good friend of mine today, Meg Vigors, who is holding it down and representing for England in the international volleyball community. So, Meg, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. We actually played together. My first memory of you is when I came over to England during the summer. It was leading up to the Olympics. And I think at the time you must have been, what, 17? Am I, yeah, am I guessing that right? 16, 17, something like that, yeah. <laughs> and the first thing that I thought was, wow, this girl is incredible for her age. Also, you're a really tall setter. So people that are out there that have ever played volleyball you'll know that having a taller setter is helpful. How did you get into volleyball and why, yeah, why did you choose volleyball as a sport in England? Uh, well, my dad played when I was growing up, so I was sort of around it. I was always watching him play. I always went to his training. And then, yeah, eventually I, I played a game and since then I haven't stopped really. <laughs> You were maybe a volleyball kid, one of the kids that gets brought to trainings and like kind of like rolls around on the floor next to the balls and just sees it, like soaks up the atmosphere and you were just hooked from day one? Uh, yeah, basically, yeah. He was also the coach at the time. So, yeah, I mean, he was always trying to teach me how to volley or how to dig. So, yeah, it just it just grew into it, I guess. So let's flash forward a little bit. You were you part of the England Juniors? Were you? What was your career up to? Let's say up to when I met you when you were training with the national team. Uh, yeah, I started England Juniors at thirteen, I think. I was by far the youngest player there, and I went with my first competition with them when I was thirteen. I went to Italy to play a. I think I only stepped on court for one point, but you know I was there. And actually, at that time, one of the coaches, because I hadn't found my position in volleyball at that point, he was like, how do you feel about being a setter? And I was like, nope, don't want to do it. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then, yeah, then I just went through the whole of the junior system. And then, yeah, eventually I joined the GB squad training for the Olympics. So who was it who convinced you, yeah, you should be a setter? Because you know I feel like that was the right move. I, I but... actually don't know. I don't remember. Right now, my... It was a smooth transition. Yeah, my sister is starting the junior national teams and they're all telling her about how they used to have to force me to set and I used to cry and 
So I actually don't remember because I think I hated it so much I kind of blocked it out. Who yeah. who forced me to do it? Yeah. Yeah. That's so funny because I can't think of another British volleyball player that's still continuing their career overseas because you you were part of the, the national team with with GB and then you went on to play in I'm trying to think if I remember this right correctly um, Czech Republic France now Germany am I missing anywhere I was in America I went to a college there but yeah apart from that's that, right yeah, you got it all correct would you say that experience in the US kind of shaped the rest of your career uh yeah I mean it probably was one of the best times of my life I was having fun and I was learning to play volleyball but yeah I mean I always knew I wanted to go pro my mom tells a story of how like it was my plan a b c all the way to z like so yeah (laughs) it was it was always my aim to go pro so it didn't shape me but it helped me definitely become the setter I am today I also went to college in the U.S. and I think it it elevates not only your obviously your academic career, but then on top of that, if you want to be taken seriously as a volleyball player in the world of international volleyball in Europe, incidentally, or maybe it seems a little backwards, but you have to leave Europe. Don't have to, but a lot of people can leave Europe, go to the U.S., be part of that college system, which we know is high level, and then you're more likely to get good offers once you get to the pro level where your your body is ready, you've trained like an NCAA athlete, and and I feel like you just have that little step advantage. You, when you yeah, get to pro. I definitely agree. I think with me having the GB flag next to my name, it kind of people question who you are. Like even now, I play pro for six years, and I came to Germany, and they're like, "Do they even play volleyball in England?" Like that was literally one of the first things that was said when I was announced. So. Yeah, I mean, you kind of have to get out of England. And I think going to America is definitely one of the best ways to do it. Yeah, it is a shame. And I remember feeling the exact same things during my career. You almost have to doubly prove yourself because you're not just, for example, if they hire just another player from Italy, it's like, oh, she's Italian. She must have grown up playing volleyball. Mm -hmm. But when you exactly when you have that GB flag next to you or that England flag, then you have to sort of prove, no, I, I... I know that it's not a popular sport where I come from, but I'm actually okay. Yeah, it's true, yeah. <laughs> and so you've now been part of Champions League, I think almost every season that you've played in the last couple of years, uh, is that yeah, right? Yeah, this will be my third year now. Can you explain to the people that might be watching what's the difference between just playing international volleyball club level and then Champions League level and why that is actually really important and really cool to represent England in? Well, you you basically play all of the best teams in Europe, like everybody who's won the league. So if they've won the Italian league, they'll be in the Champions League. And I've played Vakif Bank every year since I've played Champions League and it's just such a cool experience to play them. Like I said, English players, we don't get that much exposure because we don't play any national team. So yeah, it's another way for me to get seen. Do you have any rituals that you have to do on game day or are you kind of one of those players that's like, go with the flow, um, whatever happens, happens. I just want to play my best. Yeah, my superstition is kind of not to have any superstitions because <laughs> I find I find oh, them good so one. annoying. And if you have to do something every single time, it can get frustrating. So, yeah, no, I don't really do anything. I just go with the flow. What happens, happens. I was always kind of the same way because I remember, I, you know, you people that are watching maybe don't know, but when you travel, you have a roommate and whether it's the same roommate every time or a different one depends on the team. But I remember I had one roommate that she had to have. Like she had this list of things she had to do. Like she had to have a cold shower. She had to paint her na- nails the, the color of, of our jerseys. She had to um, meditate for 10 minutes and all of this in the hotel room, you know, between between our pregame meal and our pregame coffee. And you know, there's only like two hours there and I would just sleep. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm with you. I was just like, whatever happens because you can't control the uncontrollables. You just, yeah, it's true. Yeah. And any advice for any young players in England that are seeing you, that are looking up to you and thinking, man, I want to have an international career abroad. How can I get from where I am now to where Meg is? Uh, Just play as much volleyball as you can, really. If you can go to three, four sessions a week, then then do it. You have to touch the ball as much as possible to 
get better and also watch a lot of volleyball because if you watch you learn and maybe you'll see some new things you want to try and then you go try them and practice and yeah i think that that's important to do and we live in an age now in 2022 where you can get on youtube you can get on instagram tiktok Facebook, you can go on the volleyball world if you can pay for a subscription and you can consume so much volleyball. I mean, that's such good advice to just just like cons- let your world be consumed by volleyball. If it's something you do just once a week for an hour, then it's it's just a hobby. It's so great advice. If you want to pursue something, just surround yourself with it and do it as much as you can because, you know, anyone can do it it's achievable if you and i can do it yeah, you know <laughs> tall gangly and what you know whatever else we are yeah thank you so much for chatting with me and being on the show and i really hope that you guys at home anyone who's watching takes this advice and uh just enjoy volleyball as much as you can if you want to play go and do it <laughs> for polonia Jankowski. the upcoming year will be special for ivb polonia the club will celebrate its 50th anniversary you must all be curious about how the club was established. This was established by Polish scouts in West London and, and west of London. And it was a second generation after the war. These were people that came together to play some volleyball and have some fun. I think it was probably more social than anything else back in those days. Since the beginning, the club was open to everyone who was keen on playing volleyball. Everyone could join and I remember um, my earliest memories were there were certain Irish, British uh, and other European players that, that joined. Um, but the core was always Polish and there's always been a, a Polish link right since day one. The team grew gradually. In 1980, we were playing in the highest division called Super 8. Probably the first most important event was the European Cup. Um, and Polonia would play various teams from Europe who were head and shoulders better than they were then. And I remember going as a spectator to watch those. That was in the late 80s. And then in the early 90s, um, cup final on BBC Grandstand, live. That was a, an epic moment and a highlight of, of my life. Polonia's men's team won the English Championship seven times, the English Cup two times, and the Nevza Championship one time. 17 points to 16. Rokovic, he's been superb throughout this final. Um, we had various legends of the game come and, come and join us. We had Ignacak, we had Jiba. Um, for me, that was probably the highlight of all of it. The, the structure of the team uh, is growing all the time. We have a senior team that's playing in the English League and English Cup. Uh, that was the team that participated also in the European tournaments in the past. Since uh, three seasons, we also have uh, our own college that's part uh, of uh, Pro Volley Academy, where uh, students aged 16 to 19, they, they have a full-time education alongside uh, volleyball training. So they form another two levels of uh, our uh, team. And I think this college is something that allows us to uh, get quite a high level trainings to players who soon or eventually could be playing for our senior team and could be playing for senior teams in England. Popularizing volleyball in England is currently one of the top priorities for IBB Polonia. I think um, IBB Polonia London are the only club doing anything other than turning up, training, playing and going home. We want to organize top level volleyball events in London that bring commercial and uh, entertainment success. Uh, we want volleyball to be a recognized sport in the United Kingdom and further afield as well as a sport that can be a nice career for, for players and also for you know nice entertainment for spectators. We are also as a club uh, working closely with European and World Volleyball Federation so it gives me a personal satisfaction to be able to have a quite a strong and a meaningful influence on the growth of this popular sport in the United Kingdom. The fact that we're recording a TV program is world breaking as far as volleyball in the UK is concerned. Um, all the media presence that we have Globally, we're, we're known amongst many countries and many coaches and players who, who know about us. They contact us, want to get involved with us. They want to play us. They want to come and play for us. They want to come and coach us. So I think our brand is known globally now. The aim of the future is to wake up uh, this uh, sleeping giant or a shy sport that some people call volleyball. It's a sport with huge potential. And our goal is to help United Kingdom realize this potential. The club has changed immensely 
from probably playing outdoors 50 years ago with old leather balls on a washing line, I imagine that's how it would have looked back in those days, to some kind of organised amateur sport in a small little school hall, very dark, very dusty, very dirty, um, miserable conditions, but the passion was always there. And then we've changed and, and moved on to playing Champions League, live on TV, in front of thousands of spectators. Incredible, really. The, the, the journey that the club has been on is, is unbelievable. It's um, a short period of time, but, but grown incredibly. And for the future, who knows? I hope that um, we keep pushing and pushing and improving and, and doing bigger and better things, bigger events. Our links with Poland are always strong and, and I like them to be like that. And I want us to be as good as we can be. And, and it's, I think, down to the next generation, the younger players as well, to, to start pushing and, and getting into the team. And um, that's where their future is with us. to get the ball in system here. Potentially in the game as he does from the inside. Neil Sink. That's a good swing. International. The experience. Block is watching through the net. IBB Builders Merchants proudly supports volleyball.